So I have this problem, and the problem is that I almost never land near Kerbo Space Center. As a matter of fact, it seems that I'm always off course. Unless I use a mod that helps me with, the, with this, I kind of always miss this beautiful thing and usually end up in a completely different location on the planet. I decided to make a Python script uh, to kind of add to the previous script I was making that helps me deorbit and land that will almost always land me in a location where I want to land, starting from a circular orbit. So in today's video, let's actually explore this a little bit. I'm going to show you how you can calculate your own uh, landing parameters. And uh, we're going to basically try to land a little bit closer to Kerbo Space Center. Welcome to What The Math. So in the previous video, we wrote the script that allows us to very gently land pretty much anywhere in Kerbo Space Program on pretty much any object. And I decided to add a few things to it to make it so that we actually deorbit in a specific location around Kerbin that will help us land in Kerbo space, uh, near Kerbo Space Center. For this, I added a few lines of code here, and the first one is this new stream that checks for the longitude of the craft um, in space. In other words, what it's checking is where exactly is the spacecraft located above Kerbin. So it checks for the longitude as the craft moves across uh, the across across the orbit, uh, you can actually display this just to kind of show you what it does by adding this little while loop just for test purposes, where we're going to be displaying the uh, the longitude of the craft every one second. So let's just run it, and I always forget to add brackets here. These, this needs brackets. Um, and here we go. So it shows you the altitude as you move across the skies. And as you can see, it's increasing. This is actually in degrees. So for the purposes of math in this particular uh, script, we're going to be using radians. If you don't know anything about radians, all you need to know is that a single circle has approximately two pi radians. So um, this is not the best representation of this, but basically we have zero, uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So in other words, it goes from about 0 radians to about 6.28 radians in a single circle. So this is how we're going to be measuring our longitude. And this is simply because a lot of things are done in radians in Kerbal Space Program. To get radians from degrees, you just have to multiply the number of degrees uh, by pi and then divide things by 180. And this will actually give you the value in radians. So this is what we're going to be doing. I'm doing this automatically in the script so we don't have to actually do any math because all of this will be done right here. Uh, multiplied by pi divided by 180. So we're adding this stream that shows you longitude. We're also are going to be adding um, another little loop here where it's going to be checking for your position in regards to where KC is located. Now, this is kind of based on trial and error, and I'm going to explain to you in a second. But basically, I'm looking for an angle of 62 degrees. And once my angle, or also known as phase angle, is uh, around 62 degrees, that's when I'm going to stop this loop. This is exactly what this is doing. Basically, it's checking for position minus KSC position. Uh, and then it begins to deorbit the vessel. Now, why is it 62 degrees? So basically, all, all this does is checks for where you're located in regards to KSC. The reason it's 62 degrees is because a long time ago, we had this uh, very interesting landing chart that someone made that basically allows you to calculate or, I guess, predict where you have to deorbit um, depending on your orbital parameters. In other words, if I had the, um, which is what I have right now, the altitude of 100 kilometers, which is right here, I would have to start deorbiting at approximately 74 degrees uh, phase angle. I'm going to show you phase angle in a second. So this is kind of what it looks like. So here, if I have my craft right here, my periapsis is, is in this location. If you were to draw the line to the center of Kerbin and the location where you want to land, this forms the so-called phase angle. So if this was 74 degrees, my craft would almost always land very close to Kerbal Space Center. But then the game changed the atmospheric parameters and made, it, made them very, very complex. So now it, this chart that you saw right here doesn't really work anymore. And the angles are not as accurate. I discovered that for my craft, because of its shape, the actual angle was not 74, but approximately 62. 
And you can see that I tried 66 before and it was pretty close, but 62 was a lot more accurate. And one of the reasons it's not even close to 70 degrees is because I also have this line here where I actually slow down dramatically. So this actually changes my lane location. If I didn't have this, it would be a lot closer to 70 degrees. Uh, so we added this line that checks for the uh, longitude and compares it to the location of Kerbal Space uh, Center. And the only thing that I didn't explain to you here is this number. And this is actually a radian um, value for location in longitude of Kerbal Space Center. So it's approximately 1.30. And that's basically right around here. This is about 130 radians. Uh, so basically what this script is doing is it's checking if you're close to the position of Kerbal Space Center minus the uh, phase angle. And once this location is reached in the skies, um, the craft will deorbit automatically. It will basically start this part and then basically hopefully land somewhere close to it. So that's really the only thing we had to add to this whole script to make this work. And so let's see how well it works. I'm going to actually run this. It's going to start the script and uh, it will now basically return to you this value right here, which is it prints out the absolute um, difference between the position of your craft and KSC location. As soon as this difference is basically just 0.01 or very, very close to zero, it will then initiate the rest of the script. But right now you can see it's increasing and that's because we're actually are, I believe, yeah, we're moving away from the location where we should be. So I'm going to accelerate time a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm actually going to warp to the location where I think we need to be. I think it's somewhere right here. And you'll see that as I'm warping around, the values will at first go up and then we'll start going down. Now this is in radians and we're looking for a number that's about 0.01. .01. So right around maybe here, it's going to get to about six, six radians and then it's going to start decreasing. There we go. So 0.2, you can see it falling, uh, it's falling now, uh, 0.19. And so as soon as it gets to 0.01, this is when the script will actually stop the first loop and begin uh, positioning the craft so it basically starts uh, the uh, decelerating. I might as well just help it a little bit by positioning my craft in a retrograde position right now. So there we go. And so in a few seconds, right around here there we go it starts to decelerate decreases periapsis to zero and now we basically go into our free fall again where the rest of the script is kind of similar to what we had before so craft will free fall it will reach the altitude of 50 kilometers check for the speed decelerate if it needs to and then free fall even more so let's see where we end up uh, after this. So this should take us pretty close to Kerbal Space Center. I don't think it's going to be exactly there, but it's accurate enough that if you're playing in uh, career mode, for example, you'll always be able to use the script to save a lot of money by landing very close to KSC. So, okay, right now it's going to be approaching KSC and I think KSC is actually right there somewhere. So as you can see, we are landing relatively close to it. I hope we don't actually land on the building. Um, yeah, there it is. There's the KSC. And so now we basically free fall and the rest of the script is all automatic. It hasn't really changed from the previous video, but as you can see, we're a lot, a lot closer than uh, where we were before. Oh, I should probably slow down actually because yeah, almost crashed my craft. Uh, if, if you warp, if you're warping time, oh, that's what happens. We destroy the engine, but we might be able to land. Uh, almost perfectly. All right, just to test this again, just to see if this is uh, as accurate as, as it was this time. Let's run this again. I, I, the only reason it crashes is actually because I was warping time. Uh, I really shouldn't be doing this. So let's try this again. And so just for consistency, let's actually check what happens when we do it a second time. I'm going to make sure not to warp this time so that my craft doesn't actually crash and or not to warp that much at least. And so um, let's see where we are in regards to the location. So we're almost at the burning point. I'm going to wait just a little bit until it reaches that point and then burn, decelerate, and hopefully land in a very similar location. So we're basically are aiming to be as close to KC as possible. Oh, I almost missed the burn actually. 
All right, so here we go. Uh, we can warp to the first spot at 50 kilometers so that the craft actually decelerates. And right around here at 50 kilometers is going to slow down to about, I think it's 1700 meters, I forgot. I need to double check. 1500 meters, okay. And then it's going to keep going a little bit more and slow down at 10 kilometers. So here comes burn number one. And as you can see, we are already on the same continent as Kerbo Space Center. Uh, those are the mountains that we always pass. And now, very gently, it's going to slow down and hopefully reach this area. As you can see, it's kind of already headed that way. Uh, at around 10 kilometers, it has its next check. Might want to actually slow down a little bit. Let's see what happens here. And um, it's definitely following very close to Kerbo Space Center. I don't really know if it's going to be closer than before, but it's definitely in a very similar location. So here we go, 10 kilometers. It's going to slow down if it needs to. Okay, it didn't have to slow down because it was actually under 500. Next check is at two kilometers. And okay, looks like we are landing Possibly somewhere near the beach, actually. We, we're just a little bit off Kerbo Space Center here. And it looks like there's actually quite a lot of turbulence in the air. So the craft is wobbling quite a lot. There's the shadow. You can kind of see approximately where it's going to be landing. And hopefully this time, because I'm not warping anymore, we're not going to actually crash. And there we go. And we're landing actually very close to this monument. Uh, one of the many, many monuments in the game. And three, two, one. Looks like this is going to be a very successful touchdown because the script for the most part does a really good job at landing after this. Done. All right, excellent. Uh, no, 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 don't fall. Okay, there we go. So very, very close to Kerbal Space Center, not obviously perfect because we don't really have any um, adjustments near the landing but it will most of the time land very close so that if you're playing in a career mode you'll actually save a lot of money by recovering your craft uh, in, in this location rather than recovering it from the other side of the planet. So now you know what you need to add to the script to make it basically quite consistent in landing and the only thing you might need to change is based on the actual altitude you start from and based on the orbit you start from you might need to change this angle here so for this specific landing it, it was 62 um, if you're not using this line this actually might be even higher and i'm going to post the link for uh, this chart here that you can use as a kind of a guidance to see approximately where your angle should be, uh, your phase angle should be in regards to the actual craft and obviously to Kerbal Space Center. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys Kerbal Space Program and who wants to learn through video games. And in the next video, we're going to take this further and now go to the moon. Our next location is Moon Transfer. And then we're going to also land on the moon in the video that follows. Thank you guys, space out, and as always, bye bye. And let's see if I can slowly, gently make my way back to Kerbal Space Center by slowly hovering the opposite direction this way. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it. I have just enough fuel to make it a little bit closer. And we're going to release our parachutes right as we get closer to Kerbal Space Center. Here we go, a little more. Here we go, a little more. Release, and maybe, just maybe, uh, still not exactly there. I was hoping we could land a little bit closer, but looks like we missed it by just a little bit. Well, still closer than we were, and definitely in a really nice location.